In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today we're looking at Luke chapter 16, verses 14 to 18. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached, and everyone is pressing into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. In this passage, we see the reaction of the Pharisees to all of the teachings that the Lord has been uh, giving over the last several chapters. I mean... The Lord has been uh, speaking very, very straightforwardly and very uh, con- convincingly and convictingly about the, the you know, uh, wealth and um, having to forsake all things to be his disciple, uh, starting with hating, uh, which means not worshiping, not, not putting into high esteem, higher than necessary our own lives, our family, our friends, our parents, but rather that we have to count the cost and to follow. And then we saw how um, just yesterday the, the steward uh, who recognized that his life here was not forever, that he was not going to be a steward forever, but therefore used his riches for the sake of the kingdom. Now the Pharisees have been listening to all these teachings and it's contrary to what they want. It's contrary to what they believe justifies them. They feel good about themselves because they are following outwardly the law. And yet if you look at the spirit of the law, they are not pursuing it. So the letter of the law, they feel that they can, you know, tithe properly and do the appropriate sacrifices and do all those things and they feel religiously satisfied and this is probably the most dangerous type of ego the ego that seeks to justify itself religiously giving itself almost like a social pedestal uh, in in circles oh this person is is religious oh he's a good person oh he knows all the hymns of the church oh he you know never misses a liturgy all those things are outward outward forms of self-justification inwardly hidden in their hearts is the love of money and 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 the lord jesus is exposing how the love of money does not match the kingdom because the love of money is ultimately uh, run by fear and run by the ego run by selfishness and greed and so when he tells his disciples you cannot be my disciples unless you forsake all that you have uh, it, it 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 bothers them it convicts them it challenges them and they deride him it says here that they having heard all these things and because they were lovers of money they derided him they put him down because of their love for money well we can point at the pharisees but i cannot tell you how often when we read a passage uh, about uh, the love of money or how difficult it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom or any of those passages uh, uh, that people really struggle because hidden in our hearts is the love of money and the love of money is nothing more than fear of pain or fear of suffering we love money because we want provision we want to eat we want to be safe we love money because it provides us with comfort and the illusion of security the illusion even of freedom, freedom to do what I want, which is, which is the motto of Satanism, ultimately. Do what thou wilt. And so the love of money hidden in our hearts stands in stark contrast with the gospel and the kingdom of God. 
And the Lord exposes this in the Pharisees and he exposes it in our own hearts. This is not something that is subtle in our hearts. It is something that is that is very much driving our everyday behavior. And so the Lord reveals this to them, reveals this to us. And he says, you are he who you are the ones who'd love to justify yourself before men. What is this justification before men? It is to appear righteous. It is to appear to be a good person as though God was some sort of moralistic uh, uh, being who wants us to be good people. He doesn't want us to be good people. He wants us to be one with him. He wants us to be united with him who is love, who is the crucified Lord who has gone to the lowest place out of love, out of sacrifice. He wants us to be restored to the image of the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. How can that happen when we are driven by fear and driven by the love of money and the love of comfort and the love of self? And he says something that is very powerful. He says, what is highly esteemed by men is an abomination uh, in the sight of God. I, I mean, if he was said it was, you know, displeasing in the eyes of God, or if it was, you know, uh, dis, uh, you know, um, uh, uncomfortable, or maybe that God didn't like it, he uses the word abomination. And, and the other time that he uses the word abomination is when he's speaking about the Antichrist. Isn't that amazing? He says that that anything highly esteemed by, by men is an abomination in as much similar to the abomination of desolation, which is the Antichrist himself. Now, the word Antichrist, uh, we misunderstand it because we think of it in Latin. We think of anti as against. Oh, I'm anti whatever animal testing. I'm anti this. Okay, so anti here, when it comes to antichrist, is not written in the Latin, it was written in the Greek. And the word anti in Greek means instead of, you see, highly esteemed by men means they are worshiping things instead of Christ. And anything that is instead of Christ is an abomination because it leads us to death. It leads us to destruction. So ask yourself, as I ask myself, Mark, what is highly esteemed by you in this world? And we come back to the passage in Luke 14 where he says, unless you hate father, mother, brother, and sister, wife, and children, and your own life. And we saw that the opposite of hate is not love, but rather worship. Here we see it again, highly esteemed is worshipped. What is highly esteemed? Here the Pharisees, it was money. But money stands for so much more than just the dollars and bills. It's what the illusion of what it provides for us. Finally, he tells them that the kingdom of God has been preached since the time of John and people are pressing into it. They, as the religious folk who uh, feel justified by their outward religious you know, behavior, yet they are filled with fear and greed on the inside, think that they have the kingdom of God. They think that they have God's uh, hand in their mouth and how they act and what they say. They think that the kingdom of God belongs to them and not to anyone else. And so the Lord tells them and reveals that God is looking at their hearts and sees the love of money and the selfishness and the greed. And he tells them, listen, from the time that the kingdom of God has been preached, it, the, the, and everyone is pressing into it. Everyone. He uses the word everyone is pressing into it. All those who are poor and lame, those who are good and those who are bad 
all those who are aware of their need for God, those who are believing that God wants to be in union with them, are pressing into the kingdom, while those who are outwardly religious, yet full of greed and love of money on the inside, are not. Today, may we see as the Lord sees. Whatever is highly esteemed by men, may it be also an abomination in our hearts because it is anti-Christ. It is instead of Christ. Have a beautiful day.